Hi and welcome to another Holistic 3D YouTube tutorial or video I should say it's not actually a tutorial but you can follow along if you'd like to. In this video I'm asking can ChatGPT help us make something in Unity? Now for those of you not familiar with artificial intelligence and not sure what ChatGPT is, well it's a sophisticated chatbot constructed on a neural network. What is a neural network? Well basically it's a computer algorithm built to replicate the way the human brain learns. If you are interested in learning more about AI and where neural networks fit within that whole realm, take a look at this lecture that I gave at a Unity conference a few years ago, which will give you a simplistic overview of the entire AI domain. Now the GPT on the end of chat GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transforming of Language Models. And essentially what it is, it's an AI algorithm that's able to take a whole bunch of text particularly natural language text, which you would find on the internet, and to train itself to reproduce very similar sentence structures. Uh, and basically that's called natural language processing. So what we've got is a chatbot that has basically been trained on all the information it can get its hands on on the internet, whether that information is true or false. It can't actually assess that for itself and therefore anything that ChatGPT gives us we should take with a grain of salt and by that I mean that we should use our own common sense to evaluate the output. So let's get to the focus of this video which is to see if ChatGPT can give me some guidelines to creating something in Unity. So what I asked ChatGPT was how can I make a bouncing cube in Unity? And it came back to me with about five simple steps and here they are. So I'm going to go through them basically for the first time as you're seeing them in this video. So chat GPT says, sure, here are the steps to create a bouncing cube in Unity. First step is to create a new project and name it whatever I like. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and I should say it said create a new 3D project, which is very important. Right, first thing I have to do is open up a 3D Unity project. Now it doesn't actually specify where to get Unity from or the fact that you need to open up the Unity Hub, but of course I know to do that. So I'm opening up the Unity Hub here. I'm gonna go new project. It said to make a 3D project. It comes to 3D by default for me because that's pretty much the ones that I use the most. It didn't tell me which version to use, but I do know that this very basic kind of Unity project is gonna work in pretty much any version. So we're going to come down here and I'm going to give my project a name which I'll call Bouncing Cube and then I will go create project and that will create it and open up the Unity window for me. Okay here we are in Unity. So this is the way that Unity comes in for an empty project for 3D. I have arranged these tabs of windows the way I prefer them. Now the next instruction is, this is step two, is to right click in the hierarchy panel and select 3D object cube. Okay, so this is the hierarchy panel. We're going to right click in it, go 3D object cube. And there is our cube. Okay, so moving on to step three, which says apply physics. Select the cube in the hierarchy panel and click on the add component button in the inspector. Now the inspector for me is all the way over here, it's this window here. So I'm going to go add component. Now it wants me to add a rigid body. So if I type rigid body in here, I'll get the rigid body component. And let's just roll that up. I will also add in what it says is a box collider. Now by default, I know that the cube already has a box collider on it here. So I actually don't have to do that step of adding the box collider. Otherwise I'll have two box colliders on here. Will that cause issues? Um, I guess for this simple thing, it probably wouldn't cause issues, but if they were different sizes, it might cause issues down the track. Okay, so we have our cube and we have our rigid body on there and our box collider. Right, the next step, which is add a bouncing script to it, it actually gives the script 
and it asks us to create a new C Sharp script and name it Bouncing Cube. Open the script in Visual Studio or any other code editor to add it in. Now, what's interesting here, it doesn't give you the exact same um, commands that it did before for creating the cube. What you need to do to create that script is go down into your asset folder, right click, go up to create, and then C sharp script like this. And it wants us to call it bouncing cube. So I will call it bouncing cube just down in there. All right, so now I need to open the script in Visual Studio. Now it doesn't tell me how to do that, but I do know if I double click on here, it will do that for me. Okay, so you can see the script that ChatGPT has given me, which is there on the right. What you get with the original script by default that Unity gives you looks like this. Now, there's a few things that are in here that we don't need. If you have a look at that with these two lines here, so I can just delete those. Okay, and then I'm just quickly going to type this code in. Okay, so... Just below the script that ChatGPT gave us, it says this script adds a rigid body component to the cube and allows it to move using the arrow keys or the WASD keys. The spacebar also makes it jump. Now, this script doesn't actually add the rigid body. We did that manually through the adding of the component before. This script actually does a lot more than making the cube jump because it's also added in the ability to use the arrow keys to move the cube around. Though if you don't know Unity and you haven't actually programmed that before, you won't know that. I know that because I know this particular code, which is what this just here is going to do for us um, to actually move us around by adding a force to the rigid body. Now, the bit about the space bar making us jump is just down here. So um, when the space bar is hit, it's going to add an upwards force to the cube. Okay, so now let's try this out. The next step is attach the script. So step five, attach the script, drag and drop, the bouncing cube script onto the cube in the hierarchy panel. Now, before you do that, you should save it. Okay, so control S, uh, which is very important because a lot of people in my experience forget to do that bit about saving the script. Okay, so we're going to attach it to the cube like it's asking us to. So we drag and drop this from here and drop it onto the cube in the hierarchy. Okay, so that's not a bad step, except that it didn't say where to drag and drop the script from, which would be down in the assets panel. And now we're up to step six, which is to test the game. All right, so step six, besides the fact that it calls it a game, it's probably a bit of a stretch to call what we've just created a computer game. Um, but anyway, press the play button in the Unity editor to test the game. You should be able to move the cube around and make it jump. It should also bounce off any obstacles in the scene. Now, it doesn't say how you can move it around, although in the previous step, it did say what the code was doing that you use the arrow keys um, or the WASD keys and the space bar. OK, so we're ready to try this out. So if I press play, the cube falls. Now, I should be able to bounce that cube Well, back up again. OK, so it's falling down. Eventually, I'll come back again because of the physics system in here. I think I've probably added heaps of bounce to it. There it is. And if I add more space bar, it should come back again. It's very difficult to actually test this because of the fact it's just going to fall to oblivion down there. We won't get a chance to actually move it around. So if you want to see that, let's just add really quickly a 3D plane into the scene and we'll put it down below. So I just went right click 3D object plane. Um, I'm going to hit the R key to resize my plane and just make it a little bit bigger like that. So now that when I press play, that rigid body will act the gravity on there. And I can hit spacebar once and now you'll see that the cube will go up. And if you hit it a few times, you can actually kind of double jump and it comes back down. Now, once it does come back down, let's try our arrow keys. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's start again. So the arrow keys are adding a force to it. So I'm not going to press too hard, but you can get the idea. 
of what's going on there. That was using the up and down arrow keys. And if I just start it again and use the other arrow keys, the sideways ones, you can see that it comes the other way. Oh, and I've lost it again. Okay, anyway, so what I asked in the uh, beginning of this was I want to make a bouncing cube in Unity. Now, I probably wouldn't have bothered doing it with the script and all of that because it's quite easy to make a very simple bouncing cube just by putting some physics on it. So let's just quickly show you how I would have done it. Uh, let's go back and I'm just going to delete the cube altogether. I know it's got the script on it, but I'll just take it out and I'll go 3D cube. So there's a cube. Now, if I hit the W key while I've got that select, I can just move it up above the ground a little bit. Now, we do need to add a rigid body, which will make it fall. So if we go over to our add component, we can add in a rigid body in the inspector. And if we press play, it will actually fall down and it will hit the ground. Now, there's no bounce in this. To get bounce in that cube, you need to add a physics material, which will make it bouncy. In our assets, we're going to right click create and we're going to find physics material which is just down here that physics material let me call that bounce then over in the inspector quite quickly the bounciness i'm going to set that to one which will give us lots of bounciness and that physics material needs to be attached to our um, cube so if we go to our cube that i created over in our inspector if you have a look a little bit down through these um, components you've got the box collider which chat gpt made sure to ask us to attach it even though it's already there by default and um, we get that physics material and drag and drop that into this material then if i press play on that it's going to give me a bouncy cube which is pretty much what I was after not the script but anyway it, I guess it kind of worked in the end right so as a conclusion to having worked through this can chat GPT help you make a unity program well yes okay of course it can it gave me some script the script actually did run and work there wasn't any errors in it was it precise enough for someone who has no idea what they're doing no i don't think so not at all if you hadn't used unity before you would have been stumped right from the beginning of this especially getting unity and getting the unity hub which you need to then open a project etc so it's not specific enough for a first time user now one final thing i couldn't help but do because i have a intuitive understanding of the way that these ais work with specifics of learning things and that the fact that code isn't a natural language means that our AI, our chat GPT, can't just come up with lines of code off the top of its head and make an actual working program. Therefore, it had to get it from somewhere else. So I just did a bit of a quick search around the internet. So you can see in the black there on the left, that's the chat GPT text that it gave me or the script. On the right is some code that I found, which pretty much does the same thing on a Russian web site so it's got the ad force for jumping in there and it's also got the movements of the arrow keys now it is slightly different but essentially it's going to do pretty much the same thing and i didn't spend a lot of time looking around for this code but i'm very confident that i could find the exact code somewhere on the internet because there's a lot of code that starts out very similar to this even inside of the unity documentation so what does that basically teach us and what am i trying to say from that is just be careful what you're doing with chat gpt because you could actually be not meaning to but you could be actually plagiarizing someone else's work anyway that's chat gpt and yes it's a lot of fun to play around with and use and if you do want to use it for some other programming purposes and you get some interesting results from it please do visit our social media channels and share it with us so that we can have a look at what you're experimenting with if you'd like to support our work like us on youtube visit our website holistic3d.com look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on patreon